Dear students, today I am here with the poem Brook. Before I start with this poem, I would like to talk to you about the title. So, what do you understand by Brook? Yes, Brook is a small stream or a small river, right? So, let's see how a Brook starts its journey and finishes out, right? The first four lines of the poem go like this. I come from haunts of Kut and Hearn. I make a sudden sally and sparkle out among the fern to bicker down a wedding. So in these four lines, what do you see? That Tennyson, who is a keen observer of nature, he personifies a rocky stream. So that is why the stream describes itself as a human being and this is why the word I appears as the narrator. So who is narrating the poem? It's the brook, the river that's narrating its journey right so that is why the word i has been used so the stream originates from a place which is habitat of aquatic birds and which birds are we talking about we're talking about the coat and we're talking about the heron so then what happens is this brook takes a quick sharp turn to enter where to enter a field where the flowerless wild fern grows so as the river moves down the valley, it makes the bickering sound. Now, what is this bickering sound? Bickering sound is akin to like yep. human beings quarrel or talk amongst themselves. So they bicker. Got it? As we move on to the next four lines, let's see what the poet says. The poet says, by 30 hills I hurry down or slip between the ridges by 20 thorps, a little town and half a hundred bridges. So you see the numbers that the poet has used? Now the poet wants to say that the stream races past a land which is full of hills. The number 30 is used as a metaphor to denote the vast number of hills. So it makes its way through ridges that are common in hilly trains. As it continues its journey, it leaves behind what? Many villages and towns and so many bridges like the earlier word 30 we have 20 and we have half a hundred that is 50 so they also are meant to express a great number all right then let's move on to the third stanza which says till last by philip's palm i flow to join the brimming river for men may come and men may go but i go on forever so the poet here says that this brook, the small stream, has taken up its journey and this stream reaches the Phillips farm. After reaching there, it joins the brimming river. Small little streams, you know, they enter into the river. So this is one of that small stream that has to enter into the river. But where is it going to join the river? When it reaches the farms of Phillips. Then the stream says that it has outlived even the mightest men who are born on this earth because men are mortal they come and they go but the author is overwhelmed by the timeless existence of the stream and men's helplessness before the cycle of the birth and death now let's move on to stanza four which says i chatter over stony ways in little sharps and trebles i bubble into erring bays i babble on the pebbles so the train that the stream travels through is vast and varied and it negotiates, it turns, it runs over and trebles and blows up bubbles. So as it goes rough, because now it has joined the river, it's becoming rough now. When it dashes against the innumerable stones and pebbles, it makes a continuous drone. That's a sound that it creates while it's moving with full force. In stanza 5, the poet says, With many a curve, my banks I fret, By many a field and fallow, And many a ferry fall and set, With willow weeds and mallow. So the stream here appears to rejoice. Why? Because of the gorgeous flow. So here, the stream is very happy. It flows past some pieces of land that have rich vegetation. And these look very beautiful, exquisitely beautiful. 
so there what is growing below weeds and mallows are growing besides the bank of this brook and colorful birds chirp in the company of humming insects and butterflies that look like fairies from the sky moving on to stanza 6 it says i chatter chatter as i flow to join the brimming river for men may come and men may go but i go on forever so here we see that the stream is filled with exuberance and joy and it continues with its chatter chatter means you know it's again a human quality it keeps talking to chatting as it moves it keeps producing that sound it flows relentlessly to meet its final destination what is the final destination that's the brimming river again the poet wants to say that the stream is indestructible and like human beings we boast to be very powerful but at the end of the day we cannot escape the jaws of death then stanza 7 says i wind about and in and out with here a blossom sailing and here and there a lusty trout and here and there a grayling so what the poet says is that as the stream continues its journey it meets the flora and fauna of what place of the countryside it gets a flower as its companion it carries the flower along with the flow and it happily offers sanctuary to small fishes like the trout and the grayling these are the fishes mentioned in the poem then stanza 8 says and here and there a foamy flake upon me as i travel with many a silvery water break above the golden river so the stream encounters turbulence along its way and as it hits various obstacles in the way and what are the obstacles there the stone the rock pieces and the color of the these rock pieces is gold the splash when it strikes the rock pieces what happens it creates foams and bubbles these foams shine brilliantly in sunshine assuming a silvery glow so look at the base the base is golden and the water flowing above is silvery so the combination of the beautiful colors that is created as the brook is flowing stanza 9 says and draw them all along and flow to join the brimming river for men may come and men may go but i go on forever so the force of the flowing water of the stream pushes all that comes in its way from the light flowers to sand particles to gravel and stone everything is pushed aside the destination remains the same the brimming river where the stream will empty its content so you know the river is flowing and the stream is supposed to enter into that brimming river and again the poet wants to throw light that the brook is not mortal like human being human being has to surrender to death and destruction one day or the other but the brook will never give up stanza 10 says i steal by lawns and grassy plots i slide by hazel covers i move the sweet forget me not that grow for happy lovers so what happens here is the stream passes by lawns and patches of meadows meadows are green grasslands and what does it do it leaves behind the shrubs like hazel i believe you've heard about forget me not flowers these are associated with you know romance they are associated with love and they are blue colored ornamental flowers so they happen to fall on the water of the stream and the stream carries them gladly along thus the stream becomes nature's messenger of love life and longevity moving on to stanza 11 the poet says i slip i slide i glue my glance among my skimming swallows i make the netted sunbeam dance against my sandy shallows so the stream has to maneuver its way the stream has to create its way past the many obstacles that tend to stop it but the exuberant stream the unstoppable stream cannot be stopped it flows as a swallow birds looking for the insects 
skim over the surface of the water and the stream dances majestically in the sunlight as it passed its shallow sandy banks. The twelfth stanza says, I murmur under moon and stars in Bramley wilderness. I linger by my shingly bars. I loiter around my cresses. The stream has no break in its journey. During its journey at night, it sees the moon and the stars, the wilderness of the surrounding, full of the thorny bramble shrubs, does not unnerve it. It mingles with the scent pebbles and the cabbage-like plants. This stretch of the journey appears to be slower in pace as it moves. Stanza 13 says, and out again I curve and flow to join the brimming river. For men may come and men may go, but I go on forever. So in this stanza, the poet wants to say that the stream is flowing and the flow resumes. It was slower when we saw uh, in the previous stanza that the pace of the water was slower. Right Here again, the stream has resumed its flow in its relentless pace negotiating turns and curves and it keeps moving with the swift flow finally it joins what the river that is the final destiny of this brook river with those same lines being repeated for men may come and men may go but i go on forever so the stream mocks at the human as ordinary mortals who get consumed by time on the other hand the stream is perennial and untiring that's all for today. In case of any doubts or queries, you can drop us a message on Instagram or you can also drop them in the comment section below. I'll revert to them as soon as possible. See you in the next video. Till then, bye-bye.